What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Poker Vlog, episode number 17, day two at the Lodge Card Club. Yesterday, we got crushed, mostly in bomb pots. Today, we're looking to bounce back, have a better result, feeling great, ready to put in a long session. Let's get started. So I sit in the 1-3 game for about 20 minutes, pick up $250, then get moved to the 2-5 game. So we start with $17.50. Shortly after I sit, I pick up $7.9 suited on the button. We have an early position raise to 20, cutoff calls, I call, and the big blind squeezes, puts in the 3-bet to 105, original raiser calls, cutoff calls, and I call to close the action. We're heading four ways to a flop in position of 6-5 deuce with one heart. So we have a gut shot to the nuts and backdoor flush draw. The big blind continues with a bet of 160. All the other opponents fold and action is to me. I already know I'm going to make a play for this pot. I'm just debating whether to do it now or on the turn. I decide to just flat here and wait until the turn because it'll be more believable. Also, if I spike an 8, I may be able to get some more value against an overpair. So we go heads up to probably the second best card I could hope for, a four of hearts. Now we pick up a double gut shot with a flush draw. It's also just a great card for my position. I'm more likely to have all the sets on the board and possibly pocket threes for a straight. My new friend Hugo though doesn't seem to be worried. He fires out a bet and a big one on the turn, 650. I have about 1650 left and I'm wondering if he can fold to a shove here or if he thinks he's committed. It's really difficult for me to jam here without having it, and I think he knows that, so that's what we do. We jam it in for a thousand more, and action is back on Hugo, aka Poker Hugs. He doesn't snap call, which is good news. He goes into the tank for about a full minute, and eventually decides on a call. I ask once or twice, he says twice, so we're going two times. We don't flip our hands yet. First river is a queen of hearts, and second is a black eight. So we spike both draws. Are we scooping here? Nope. We see terrible news. Uh, come to find out we were in the worst possible shape. Hugo flips over ace eight of hearts. He had my hearts locked up and he also blocked an eight. So in retrospect, I should have tried to take it down on the flop, but um, I still think it's a better play to move on the turn. But had I known his exact hand, a better raise would have been on the flop because he's not supposed to have ace eight of hearts there. We were hoping he had an over pair. And he likely just lays that down on the turn. So that was a fun one. Nice call, Hugo. We both hit a ridiculous turn card there. Ten minutes later, we pick up 4-6 suited from under the gun plus one. First player limps, and I raise to 25. Next player calls, and the under the gun limper calls. We head three ways to a flop of queen, queen, queen. Looks like a bad flop for us, but it's a good uh, flop for an early pre-flop aggressor. So... First player checks, I bet 45. Even if either player has a small pocket pair, it'll be uncomfortable to continue because I'll probably barrel the turn and river. They both end up making the lay down. Not a big pot, but uh, my new friend on my left says we'll see it on the vlog. My friend on right, Siva, just subscribed, so here it is. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. What a great atmosphere. A lot of players, every table asking, what's the channel? They want to check it out. Everybody's so nice. So an hour later goes by. We pick up King 10 of hearts from under the gun. I open for 20. Middle position player and button makes the call. We had three ways to a flop of 10, 7 deuce with two spades. So we have top pair, but nothing much else going on. No redraws. I lead out for 45. Next player calls and the button folds. Heads up to a queen of spades on the turn. Flush gets there now, so we are pretty much done betting this hand. I check. He takes some time and decides on a bet of 125. I know it's a good bluff card for him, so I'm not quite finished yet. I make the call. River is a blank, five of clubs. I check it to him and he checks back. I show the king 10 and he mucks it. Next, I have Ace King in the small blind. Player in the hijack raises to 15. He's been making some funny raises. Sometimes it's 15, sometimes it's 50. It's folded to me. I put in the three bet to 55. He makes the call in position. We go heads up to a flop of King 8 3 Rainbow. I'm not slow playing. I lead for 50, and he ends up calling. It's a dry board, so he could have any pair on the board just to see a card on the turn. Turn looks like a blank four of spades. 
I check it to him for deception, and he checks back. Pretty sure we have the best hand, and now when the river brings a jack, I bet 75, hoping for calls from a pair of eights or worse kings, but he doesn't call. He throws out three black chips, making it 300. I have no clue what's going on here, so out of curiosity, I make the call, and he shows 3-4 offsuit for two pair, and gets me for max value. I guess I could have made the lay down on the river. Uh, maybe he has jack eight or king jack, a small set, but uh, kind of didn't mind paying for some information from that player. Next, we look down at pocket queens from the hijack. I raise it to 20, cut off calls, and the button puts in the three bet to 80. Big blind cold calls, and it's back to me. Sure, the button could have aces or kings, but a three bet from there seems to be a squeeze a greater percentage of the time. I'd rather take it down right here than go four ways to a flop with queens, so I put in the four bet to 350. Next player folds, the big blind tanks for a bit, and lays it down. Later we pick up uh, ace queen in late position. I raise it to 20. The button, small blind, and big blind make the call. We had four ways to a flop of 10, 9, 3, rainbow. It's checked to me. I check as it's not likely I'll get through three players, kind of a connecting board there, and the button checks back. The turn is just what we were looking for, an ace of diamonds, but puts a possible flush draw out now. Small blind checks, now the big blind leads out for 80. It's a pot size bet, and to be leading into three of us, it could be a pretty strong hand like a set, or maybe he has a combo draw. I make the call, and everyone else folds. The river is a total blank, deuce of clubs, straights and flush draws miss, and he's first to act. He grabs an overbet, $320. So I'm remembering that these overbets more often seem to be made for value as opposed to a bluff. However, I need to see it because this is Texas. I make the call and he shows the goods, ace nine for two pair. We get a bad run out there. I think he can also be bluffing the missed draws in that spot, so I don't think it's that terrible of a call, but I really should have just remembered that he let out into three players on the turn, and it's less likely to be a bluff in that spot, so tough call there, and we lose another big one. Next we look down at pocket fives from the big blind. Under the gun limps, and middle position player raises to 25. Next player calls, button, small blind, myself, and the under the gun limper call. We go to a rare six-way action to a flop of King Jack Nine with two spades. We can't possibly win this one, right? Small blind checks, I check, and somehow it checks around. Turn is a five of hearts. We turn a set that's hidden on a connected board, might not even be any good, with overcards. Small blind checks, I gotta find out where we're at here, I bet 80. I'll probably get called by someone with a jack or a nine with a straight draw. Miraculously, nobody connected with this flop six ways and everyone folds immediately. Our game is dying down here. We are six-handed in a tough game when I pick up Jack-8 suited from the small blind. The $15 under the gun straddle is on. Two players limp and I put in the race to 75. Big blind looks at his cards and freezes. We already know the three bet is coming. He makes it a reasonable 225 to play, that's the new price. He has 9000 in front due to winning a massive multi-way pot with quads earlier. It's folded back to me and I make the call for 150 more. Heads up to a flop of 1075 with one heart. We flop a gutter and backdoor flush draw. This is a similar situation to the first hand with the 79 suited. I'll be making a move here on this pot for sure. I check it to him, he fires out 250. I have the same thought process as that first hand of the video. I wouldn't really be check raising here often with a super strong hand like a set of 10s on this rainbow board, so I decide to flat here with intentions to make a move on the turn. I'm already prepared to bluff, but hold up, the turn is a 9 of clubs, we nail the gutter, it's completely hidden. The problem is, is that we are short handed and he may just have ace king or ace queen. No sense in leading out into him here. All we can do is hope that he actually has an over pair or top pair. I check. He's in the tank for a bit. Looks like he's thinking of firing big to put the pressure on. After some thought though, he decides on a check, which doesn't necessarily mean he doesn't have an over pair. When games are this deep, guys are checking back for pot control often. We are looking for some aces or kings on the river to hopefully improve his hand. We don't get it though. River is an absolute brick, deuce of spades. 
with certain opponents, I might check here to let them bluff at it, but uh, with this board texture and this player, he's solid, and he probably has a hand with some showdown value, so I can't let it check check. I bet 515, about half the pot, and he lays it down right away. So still happy we pick up a big pot there with Jack-8. So our game breaks up pretty much after this hand. I'm down about 1,200. There's one other shorthanded 2-5 game. My gut is telling me to sit in the PLO. So check this out, that's what I do. I take uh, 1300 over to the PLO game and check this hand. So in the Hold'em game, I didn't really win or lose any big bomb pots. The third hand over here in the 1-2-5 PLO game, I have 9-9-10 jack double suited. It's a bomb pot. We flop top set on the top board and a wrap on the bottom board. It holds on the top and we hit the straight on the turn. We're three way all in and I get the super scoop. So I end up losing 1174 in the Hold'em game and then come over to PLO and win 1429 in about an hour. And uh, cash out there, we book a $255 win on the night. And um, I'll get you guys the stats at the end of the video. So over not, overall that night was not bad. We made a comeback thanks to PLO. Glad I went with my gut. And uh, that's pretty much it for Texas Poker for the No Limit. All right, guys, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the content coming from the lodge in Texas last week. Not a great uh, result. Um, last time we were there, we won like 3,300 and hold them. This time we lost 3,600 and hold them and another 5,500 in Omaha. So here are the hold them stats currently through all the vlogs. So still doing well, hourly still good there. Um, I got the Omaha in there as well. I'm going to keep track of that because I'm probably going to dabble a little bit more in there just I think it's gonna help my overall game probably not gonna vlog any of it I don't think anybody likes to watch and it's you know I'm newer to the game so I need to be focused um, but yeah not really unhappy with the hold'em overall just a lot of bomb pots uh, lost and definitely a lot of knowledge gained for sure so be looking forward to the next trip out there next time so hope you guys enjoyed it um, Back in Vegas, I already had one good session um, back in Vegas at the win. We picked up 1,440 playing PLO, and I'm going to be going back out tonight, which is Saturday night, probably Aria tonight. So look for that vlog coming up on Wednesday. As always, I appreciate you guys checking out the video. Stay to the end for a trick shot. Hit the like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and we'll see you on Sundays and Wednesdays for the next videos. Good luck at the tables, everyone. See you next time.